Hello and welcome to Model Train Fun. Today we are going to look at how we can uh, monitor the uh, power consumption on your layout. So uh, why is this important? Well, that's because if you hit the capacity of your power supply, it will actually shut off. Uh, on the mobile station uh, 2, uh, this is problematic because the mobile station 2 only uh, can uh, provide a certain amount of power, uh, which is uh, 1.9 amps and uh, you really cannot upgrade the power supply for the mobile station 2. On the central station 3, however, there's relief. Uh, first of all, because uh, the uh, power supply is bigger, it's actually a 3 amp power supply for the central station 3, plus if you hit the limit of your power supply, then you are actually able to uh, upgrade with additional boosters. However, that also uh, requires that you uh, divide your layout uh, into uh, different sections with different boosters. We are going to look at uh, first how do I monitor the uh, power consumption uh, using the mobile station 2. Then we are going to look at how we are going to monitor the power consumption on the mobile station, sorry, on the central station 3. Uh, and then we are going to look at uh, what is it really the affects uh, the uh, power consumption on your layout. Enjoy the video. Let's uh, start by looking at the uh, mobile station 2 and see how we find the power consumption on this one. Um, so basically what you do is you need to go into the configuration of the device. So that's shift and then the uh, turnout over here where you see there's a wrench here. So you hit that one and then you can see uh, there's uh, something called uh, status values here. Uh, you hit the uh, equivalent button here next to uh, status values. So I hit this one here and then you can see there's some status values you can see here. Uh, remember over here to the uh, right, you can scroll up and down on the scroll bar. So you can scroll down and up. The one we are interested in is actually the main. And here you can see uh, what the power consumption is. And as you can see right now, there is uh, zero amps or no power used at all on the uh, layout. So if uh, we start uh, the locomotive, so you see I got the locomotive here and uh, it's on a little oval so I can safely drive it. So if I again look at my uh, mobile station, you can actually see I have that locomotive chosen here so I can just drive it. So if I just speed it up you can see it actually consumes some power right now it's almost at full speed so right now the uh, locomotive is at full speed and you can see it consumes uh, 0.3 amps now uh, what else uh, could affect uh, the power here well actually if we uh, turn on light and uh, and sound on the uh, locomotive, it might actually use uh, more as well. So I'm gonna turn on the light and I'm gonna turn on engine sound. So now you can hear there's engine sounds as well. Let's go in and see what the consumption is. So shift, turnout, status values, main. It's actually still uh, uh, 0.3. Well, it shift between 0.3 and 0.2. All right, let me uh, turn it off again, the sound here. So what you can see, let me just decrease the speed a little here. I turn, hit shift and the turn out. And then I hit uh, the main again. And now you can see the consumption is only a 0.1 amp. You also see the locomotive is going a lot slower. So in this way, it's easy to monitor uh, how much a locomotive actually uses on the layout. However, you have to consider that this is not constant. It depends on the speed, as you could see. Uh, I'm not quite sure what happened there since it went to 3.2. That was rather funny. Um, so it depends on the speed, whether or not the sound. If you're having some of older digital locomotives, uh, they don't have LEDs, but light bulbs instead. When you turn on the light, you might actually see a bigger impact and so on. So um, there's lots of things to consider. So that was locomotives. Uh, let's have a peek at what happens when we add uh, turnouts. So I look at my mobile station again. It's zero. 
I'm going to put it in stop mode, okay? And then I'm going to add some turnouts. So I have some turnouts here. I can add, so I'm going to add 10 turnouts here. All right, just two more. That is 10 turnouts. We go look at the uh, mobile station again. I go out of stop mode. I see, as, as you can see now, there's actually uh, zero power used. Um, so the difference uh, between the uh, locomotive and the turnout decoders or accessories is the accessories really don't use that much power when they're not used. However, when they're shifted, you will see that it actually jumps. Um, however, you cannot shift and watch on this display at the same time, unfortunately. However, let me just try and add one more and see if we at least can get some indication. I put it into stop mode again. I add number 11. We go out of stop mode. And you can actually see now, now we can see something. Uh, funny enough, um, just number 11 gives me just a little extra out here. You see there's something here. It doesn't really uh, count up in the values, but it does indicate there is um, more power used. So what does all of this tell us? Well, first of all, when you got a mobile station 2, the limit is uh, 1.9 amps, so when this uh, value hit uh, 1.9, it will actually uh, turn off the power or shut off the power. Um, so you have to uh, keep a value below that. Furthermore, what you have to think about is uh, when you get close to the 1.9, your, your layout or your operations may actually become unstable because it's close to the limit, right? Uh, so consider that as well. Uh, we saw the locomotive we had on before, that was uh, 0.3 amps. So uh, if we uh, say uh, the maximum is 1.9 and um, we got 10 turnouts on like here, then in theory we should be able to have six locomotives running at full speed with sound. However, you also did notice when I was uh, driving at a slower, more reasonable pace, it was down at 0.1 amp, right? So what does all this tell us? Well. The power consumption really depends on what happens on the layout. And as such, you need to uh, monitor it once in a while. However, I would say only really do it if you suspect there is issues. All right, let's look at uh, how we look at the power consumption on the uh, central station tree. So in order to uh, find that, we need to go uh, into the system up here. So the first uh, button in the top. Oh, by the way, if this panel is not visible, so it might look like this, you pull down in the green tab here, and then you can find the system here furthest to the left. We click on system. You see it already comes into a setting here. If it comes up like this, then you can hit back. Then you can see there's an overview of the settings we have here, and then you can click system. And now we actually are coming into the same one, but what we need is it TFP3. I have no idea what TFP3 stands for, but this is actually where we can see the power consumption. And actually what you see in here is you can see the power consumption on the main, you can see the power consumption on the programming track, you can see the voltage, the temperature, and down here you can also see um, how often will it actually update the values. As I understand it, it does a mean or an average uh, in between each sample. Uh, however, I'm not sure. So five seconds is the default value. I'm just gonna let it sit there because there's no reason uh, to do anything else. One thing we need to do, and uh, actually you need to do this already when you set up the central station tree, but let's just double check it right now. Uh, one thing you need to do is to go down underneath settings. You scroll down and here it says you can choose a power supply. And you actually have a couple of choices in here. You've got the 60061 and the 60101. And then you've got another one that I'm not quite sure uh, what is. 
However, uh, you need to set this correctly because this will actually determine what is the uh, the, the uh, amps. It will shut off the power uh, in case of overload on the track. So you need to make sure to set this one correctly. So uh, here's an overview of uh, of uh, the power supplies you can uh, connect to the central station tree and what should you set the uh, power supply setting for. So if you're using uh, HO or N-gauge, um, then there's basically a set of um, uh, power supplies that basically uh, are 60 watts uh, or which actually will end up being uh, 3 amps. So the 3 amps, there you would choose the uh, 60061 setting which actually will tell the uh, sensor station 3 that it should shut off at uh, 3 amps. Um, if you're using the uh, 60101, uh, by the way, why is that in yellow here? Well, it's because you can actually do it, but it actually says in the manual it's not recommended. Funny enough, it doesn't say do not do it, it just says it's not recommended. Um, but if you're using that one, then you set it to the 60101, uh, and that will actually be a 5 amp uh, output setting that will be on that one. So uh, the uh, Macklin 1 gauge, this is actually where you would use the uh, 60101. Uh, so if you're using a uh, 1 gauge, you are using uh, two of the supplies, uh, power supplies down here. And then you will also set it to 60101, uh, which is the 5 amps. If you're using the LGB, Oh, this is actually here where the uh, power supply comes up that I didn't know what was uh, just before. So here you will choose the L51095. But in essence, if you are using uh, Macklin C-Track, if you're using HO, then you would actually be up here in this block up here. So no matter which of the power supplies you're choosing, uh, that are the 60 watts one, then you would use the setting for the 60061, which is the 3 amps. Now uh, let's look at the uh, power consumption on the, um, of the locomotive we got here on the track in the same way as we did with the uh, MS2. So again, we go into system and um, since we already uh, was in the setting, it will actually jump directly to this setting. Remember, if it wasn't here, you can hit back. You see the uh, system page here with all the settings and then you hit system and then you go down to the TFP tree. You click TFP tree and then we scroll down till we find the values. As you can see now here my uh, central station tree is in stop mode. So um, let me, um, well, and when it's in stop mode you see the power consumption is zero. Okay, let me take it out of stop mode. Um, and remember, it uh, does the status inquiry interval every five seconds. So be patient uh, after you, um, you turn it on. But now we can see, we can actually see here on the main track, it is actually drawing current. So it's 0 0.025. So what does that mean? Well, it actually means that um, locomotive, even though it's doing nothing, remember there's a decoder inside that is actually consuming power. This though is uh, way less than what we uh, could detect with the mobile station two, but the central station three, we can actually detect it. All right, um, so 0 0.025. Um, let's try and go over and see uh, if we turn on the, the light. If, uh, oh, it says the light is off, on. Let me go back and see uh, what it is here because now it's definitely off. Now you see it's off and it's 0 0.016. So before it was on and it was 0 0.025. So you can see that uh, actually even the light, even though it's LEDs, it actually does use power. Surprise, it is electrical, right? But it uses far less than it would have if it's, um, if it's light bulbs. So uh, let's try and go out again. We try and go into the locomotive and oh, I'm just going to stretch it out a little here. This time I'm going to turn on the light and I'm going to turn on the engine. And you can hear the engine is saying some sounds here. All right, I go back in here and we wait for an update. 
0 0.025. Well, it's basically not a lot of sound right now, so, so maybe that's why it doesn't influence it. So depending on the locomotive, depending on the decoder and so on, you can also see it jump when you turn on the sound. So uh, let's see if I can uh, drive the locomotive here. So over here to the left, I'm just going to increase the speed of the locomotive. And you can see the locomotive drives, and you can also see the uh, current uh, going up. And notice it kind of jumps, and that's because it's only doing uh, the query every uh, five seconds. So right now it's drawing 0 0.066. I'm going to increase the speed. And you can see it jumps up, so now I'm at 0 0.1 amps. And let me just give it full speed. And now you can see the uh, current uh, jumps all the way to 0 0.308. So that's the same as we saw on the mobile station uh, 2, although we got a couple of extra digits here. But uh, 0.3 amps basically uh, for the locomotive going full speed. But if I put it down at what would uh, probably be a more reasonable speed, you would see that the current actually drops. Um, one thing, um, let me just try and illustrate it now. So I will slow it down just a little more. Um, because you could ask what happens if I have um, if I have a cars trailing it. So now I'm going to do what you're not allowed to. I'm going to push the locomotive a little. And you see, when I do this, you saw the amp going up. Um, so actually, in, in the case where you would see that uh, you have a lot of cars behind, the locomotive would also, uh, I'm going to push it again here. So you see the amps go up. Now, yeah, you did. There it is. Remember, it's already every five seconds. So you can see, as soon as you, uh, at, as the locomotive gets strained, so this could be either because uh, it has a lot of cars, it's towing a lot of cars, or it's going uphill, for example, that will also affect the locomotive. All right, let's uh, try with another locomotive. Um, so you see here on the track, I got another locomotive, and it's actually another manufacturer as well. So uh, let's try and see what the power consumption is of uh, this locomotive. Again, remember to pull down the green tab, hit the system. If you don't come up on the right page, hit back. When you're here on the blue settings here to the left, you can hit system and then you can hit the TFP3. All right. And then you can scroll down. Um, all right. So you can already see here that the current on the main track uh, is different. So it's using 0 0.008. So uh, that's uh, less than uh, what the other locomotive was using when it was just standing still. We can uh, try and go ahead and, oops, can I get that here? Uh, here it is. All right, I turn on light and sound and you will see it uh, jumps. When the sound turns on, here the sound is slowly turning on. I don't see the numbers change yet though, but I do, do hear the sound. All right. Maybe there isn't much different with or without sound with this locomotive. Okay, let's uh, try and give it some speed. And I'm just going to give it a uh, straight uh, top speed. This uh, locomotive accelerates uh, pretty slowly, so we have to give it a little patience. And we see the uh, current going up, so 0.125 amps now. And I believe it's uh, almost at top speed. 0.283 amps. 
So you see it actually shows something different here than uh, what the other locomotive did. It seems like uh, when it's in speed, it actually uh, settles at 0.267, so that is actually uh, lower than the other locomotive. All right, let me um, just um, slow this down. So uh, what does this mean? Well, actually what it does mean is uh, not every locomotive is the same, so you cannot just measure one locomotive and then think uh, you know how to calculate how many locomotives can be uh, on the track. Um, the, uh, each locomotive is different, each decoder is different, with or without is different, with LEDs, with light bulbs is different and so on. So basically, you'll have to monitor your power consumption on your layout once in a while. By the way, when I am on this page here, what happens when you have uh, boosters as well? So honestly, I'm a little unsure what will happen if there will be uh, several icons down here, out here to the left where it says TFP3, if there'll be seven, several icons underneath that, uh, or if there'll be several icons across here where it says G GFP3-1. Um, actually, I think the last thing might be more likely, and then you will have a set of icons here where you can click and see the power consumption of each booster. And uh, as I understand it, I seem to recall the number of maximum number of boosters you can have uh, with the Central Station 3 is 50. Uh, so if that's true, you can truly run a lot of uh, locomotives on your layout. So do remember when uh, we had the Mobile Station 2, uh, the limit was 1.2. Uh, sorry, 1.9 amps. Here we set the limit, and remember we set the limit down here underneath the settings to the power supply. For the typical normal power supplies with the Central Station 3, it's uh, the 60061, with, where the limit is 3 amp, and with the 60101, which is not necessarily recommended for the HO scale, but it's definitely needed for the Macklin um, uh, 1 scale and the LGB. Uh, that is actually uh, 5 amps. So if you have 50 uh, boosters of uh, 3 amps, you will actually end up with quite a lot of amps you can use and quite a lot of trains you can run on your layout. Now uh, let's uh, look at uh, the consumption of the uh, turnouts as well as we did uh, with the mobile station 2. Let's see how it looks on the uh, central station 3. So uh, right now I have uh, it in stop mode, as you can see. So let me just add the uh, 10 turnouts. There's the first two, another three, oops, another three, and then two more. So now we are at eight turnouts, okay. Sorry, now we had 10 turnouts. Let me go out of stop mode. And what do we see? Well, let's be uh, patient. Remember, it only updates every uh, five seconds. And we see a number now, so 0 0.025 amps. So what you can see here is that the uh, turnouts actually use a lot less power than, um, than the um, locomotives. Now, it's actually hard to capture um, the turnouts operating and and uh, looking at this screen at the same time. So I'm not going to try and do that. But if you actually succeed in doing that, and you may actually have to uh, turn down the status uh, inquiry interval to one or something like that, then you would actually see whenever the turnouts actually shifts, it will actually jump a lot. Um, and uh, the challenge can be if you have a lot of turnouts shifting at the same time, if you have an automated layout, for example, and you got 10 turnouts shifting pretty much at the same time, then they would actually in an instant draw a lot of uh, current. Uh, and that actually means there would be a big jump, which could mean that it would actually uh, pass uh, the limit, which in this case is uh, 3 amps, and could actually uh, make your automation actually unstable or unstable. 
Now uh, let's uh, add number 11. So remember when we had the mobile station 2, we couldn't really see anything when we only had 10. And you can see it's only point, uh, 0.025 amps. Let's try and add number 11. I put it in stop mode and I add number 11. Okay. We take it uh, out of stop mode and we wait patiently. It got an immediate uh, measurement there and here now it's stabilized and now you see it point 0 0.033. So that's actually a uh, point uh, zero, zero 005 uh, for the last one here, uh, which is actually uh, more than all the others. Uh, to Or it's actually a bigger jump than the first 10 uh, actually did provide. And that's actually because the last turnout here is a different uh, decoder. It's actually the one, it's a slow moving one from Feastman. It actually uses a little more power. Um, as I understand it, if you actually succeed in capturing these things, the Macklin ones will will actually uh, uh, in standby mode use uh, less power, but have a big jump uh, whenever the magnet is is uh, is uh, is, uh, is uh, shifted uh, inside, or the turnout mechanism is shifted inside, and the turnout shifts. Um, while the uh, Feastman will have a bigger standby, and I'm a little unsure when it operates, if it's, if it's higher or lower uh, than the jump of the Macklin turnout mechanism. But what you will see is it will be over a longer period because it actually takes it a while to actually shift it and will, the little engine will operate. So uh, what actually uh, affects the uh, power consumption uh, on your layout? Well, uh, first of all, what we did see, uh, locomotive, they use, uh, they use power and they use more power uh, when there's more locomotives uh, on the layout. And don't forget, a locomotive, even in standby, will actually uh, use power. So that means if you have a lot of locomotives sitting around, but you're only driving one, it might actually still uh, use uh, power, even uh, with everything turned off. Uh, when you turn on sound, when you turn on light, when you turn on smoke or any kind of special function uh, on the uh, locomotive, it will uh, use additional power as well. Uh, finally, it will also use more power if it's under strain, so there's a high number of cars or there's inclines and so on. If we uh, use, look at the cars, well, in essence, typically cars won't use any power. However, if you have passenger cars, they might have light, or there are special cars that have sound, or there are other special cars that have special functions. For example, the cranes, when you use the cranes and so on on the layout, all use power. Um, of course, if you have a layout or you've got sound modules, let's say chickens or background sounds or church bells and so on, that can also use the power when turned on. However, as a good tip here, you don't need to power these type of uh, devices uh, directly from the track. Consider using a separate uh, power supply for that, which would mean that it would not affect uh, the, let's say, the digital part of your layout. However, um, there is also accessories. So as you saw before, when I add uh, turnouts, uh, they will actually also use power. Uh, and they will actually use uh, power even in standby. They will use power when they shift and so on. Uh, so when you operate them, and by the way, if you change a lot of turnouts at the same time, which you may do if you have a large layout, you can have big jumps in power consumption. So be very aware of that. Um, furthermore, um, uh, it's, it's uh, I would say, don't forget there's many types of accessories. There's turnouts, uh, there is uh, the uncoupler track, there is signals and so on, right? So th there's a lot of accessories uh, potentially on your track. However, as a tip, some accessories can actually be uh, powered uh, from uh, additional power supplies, uh, which you, for example, can see with the M83, M84, or the turnout lanterns, I believe some, uh, some um, uh, signals also can be powered independently and so on. 
So those are things you can look at if you are in trouble with your power on your uh, layout. Um, furthermore, uh, any type of device that you actually uh, connect uh, to your Macklin system, so the so-called CAN bus devices, they will use uh, power as well. And the more you connect of those, the more there will be. For example, if you are using uh, Mobile Station 2, if you connect the second controller, that will also use uh, power. If you're using the Central Station 3, if you are connecting uh, multiple devices on there, that is multiple uh, uh, Mobile Station 2s, additional uh, Central Stations and so on, they will all use power from the same uh, power supplies although some of them will have individual power supplies. So all in all, don't forget you have to look at the total power consumption uh, of your layout, and you also have to remember the hidden areas. You have to remember things that are just sitting in standby, locomotives that are not driving, accessories you are not using, but they're just there, because it's all small decoders, small computers that are actually using uh, power. If you, you like this uh, video, uh, please uh, give it a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And I hope uh, to see you again with the next video. Enjoy!